In this video, I have a Panasonic model NN ST785S that someone threw in the dumpster. Yes, I pulled this out of the recycle bin. It was full of water. I've let it dry out for a few days and we're gonna open it up and make sure that there's no water damage and then give it a full check over. And we have a surprise for the end. Stay tuned. So here's the unit as I received it. And again, uh, when I picked it up out of the, the, the recycle bin, it had been sitting in the rain for, uh, I would think probably close to a week. It had been sitting there for a while. And um, anyway, it was it, it was soaked. So I let it dry out for a few days. You can tell that this unit has been installed in a build-in kit because, well, first of all, it still had the, the attachment that frames it up installed. And there's the, the, the duct tape there is used to seal it off. I took the, the uh, build-in kit off because it was all kind of bent and so forth. And it had was starting to rust. Um, it's not stainless steel like the rest of the, the cabinet is. So it was rusting. Anyway, because water may have gotten into this unit. So before powering this unit up, I'm going to take the top off it and just make sure that water hasn't gotten into the inverter or any of the other critical areas of the unit itself. The way it was sitting, it, there's a good chance that water didn't get in, but I got to check it anyway, right? So let's get the top off it. Because of the high voltage involved on these microwaves, they do come equipped with security torques bits. If you don't have the correct bit, you can always file down a flat blade screwdriver slightly and they'll fit in there and remove the screws quite simply just like that. Not seeing any water damage and any water entering the cavity. I think the first thing we'll do here is we'll check to make sure that the fuse is not blown because as you remember the last one of these microwaves that I looked at uh, all that was wrong with it had as the fuse had failed so first thing we'll do is we'll check for a blown fuse and it's beeping so the fuse is good maybe this thing works wouldn't that be something now what we've got on here, this is a this is actually a temperature cutout, so that if the magnetron were to overheat, it would uh, shut it down. But the fuse is not blown, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to plug this thing in and see if this thing even works. I mean, this might this might be a score. Uh, if you guys want to see what the inverter looks like, the inverter is right inside here, and I can open this up and show you the inverter. I can get into this thing. Here's where all the high voltage stuff is. Again, we won't get into this unless we have to, but as you can see, you've got a couple diodes down here. This is for the flyback. And again, it, it doesn't look like there's any water that's gotten into this thing here, which is good. And it basically operates with a flyback transformer. There's, a, there's the high voltage flyback, flyback type of transformer. It's a switching inverter, right? They put these covers on here just to keep fingers out. keep you away from the high voltage. It's lighting up. I think I'll go get a glass of water and see whether this thing works. This might be this might be the find of the week if this thing works. Wouldn't that be something else? The tracer sits up high from the uh, interesting. Okay, let's just see if this thing will actually work. Power level. Let's put it on for two minutes. We'll see if it'll heat anything. I think we can see the steam coming out the top. It's a pretty good indication that this thing's working. Ouch! Yeah, it's uh, it's working really good. Nothing wrong with this unit. Unbelievable. Someone threw out a two-year-old microwave. Almost new. No fault. Dumped. Now the only conclusion that I can make to this is that maybe someone bought a new house 
and it was furnished and they get into the new house and the little lady's like I don't like that microwave I want a different one and they ripped out a brand new because when I found it in the recycle bin it still had the top for the build-in kit that you would use to build in the vent it did not didn't have the trim kit for the front of it but it had the, the, the vent cover that goes over the top that directs the steam that comes out of the top here because the vents are on the top and the side it directs the it directs the steam out the front that was still attached to it when I got the thing when I picked it out of the recycle bin so unbelievable that someone would throw out a unit that is not even two years old and is perfectly functional and they just tossed it in the trash unfortunately that's the society that we're in today with the disposable uh, nature of everything is that people just toss out things that are perfectly working so guess what I'll be making some money off this this one's gonna go up on Craigslist I'm sure I'll have no trouble selling a brand new microwave well the only reason I can think of somebody wanting to toss out a brand new unit like this is because of the ridiculous asinine way that the uh, turntable sits to get this turntable in is it's a bit of a challenge because first of all you have to put in the the ring assembly but you can't just put the turntable in and, and sit it in there oh no no this one here you actually kind of have to fiddle fart around with it to get it to sit now it's sitting in there but if you notice the thing's up a good you know it's up a good three quarters of an inch from the base so um it's not a, I wouldn't say it's the best, I guess once it's in place it's not going to go anywhere, but when you, when you take this out for cleaning, to get it back in, just to get the thing centered, it's a bit of work to get it centered there initially. And the first time I put it in it actually took me a couple of minutes to figure out exactly what way it went in. Once I got it figured out it, it, it fits in there fine, but the first time I put the tray in there it was a bit of a, a challenge to figure out exactly what way it sits on the drive shaft there, but uh, anyway. I think I know why somebody threw this thing out. I just had an eruption. You can see the water <laughs> on the table here. Um, I was just testing it again, and literally the water exploded out of the cup. Let's see if it'll do it again. That might be why someone tossed this out, because it this is a 1200 watt and it has a lot of power. So let's see if it'll do it again. This phenomenon is called superheating and it actually has resulted in people that have been scalded when the literally the liquid in their cup, which is going to be water, it has to be pure water for this to happen. If you've got sugar or salt or coffee or anything in there, it's not going to happen. But if it's pure water, you can superheat the water and the water will literally explode. Now it's a fairly rare phenomenon that it happened and it happened once. Let's see if we can get it on camera happening again. What I've done is I've just refilled the glass with water and I'm going to heat it up here and see whether I can recreate this on camera. Ladies and gentlemen, we just had an eruption inside that microwave. cup of water was full but now well pretty sure that's probably the reason why that microwave was taught that's why that brand new microwave was tossed in the garbage it's a really powerful unit and as you can see well I just gave it a pressure wash inside by just filling it with a cup of water and letting it run for what about three minutes um, there you go I'm pretty sure we now know the reason why this thing went in the garbage perfectly functional someone uh, had a couple of eruptions of coffee or something inside and decided hey I'm getting rid of this thing and getting a cheaper one that's got less power okay now if you're wondering what caused my coffee cup to be turned into a volcano it's the explanation is actually quite simple it's a it's a phenomenon called superheating. It should also be pointed out that this will only occur if you're heating 
pure water. And it, is not, it does not happen all the time. It's actually a relatively rare occurrence. And for me to be able to demonstrate it happening twice, once off camera, once on camera, um, is quite rare indeed. But the design of this microwave oven, it contributes considerably to this phenomenon happening. The problem uh, where of the, the design of this unit is the location of the waveguide. If you notice, it's right near the bottom. So what tends to happen is the microwave energy is concentrated at the bottom, which will heat the water at the bottom of the cup much faster than water near the top, which can build up steam. And well, you saw what happened. The steam built up, built up pressure and basically launched all the water out of the cup. Now, people have been injured. Any microwave oven, this can happen under the right conditions. If you've got very clean water with no impurities in it and you boil it, the water might not appear to be boiling, but it's hot enough that once it's disturbed, the energy that's stored in the water can be released all at once and then you have water splashing right in your face. And that has happened to people. There, has been, there have been people that have been scalded by this. Now, there are ways to prevent the geyser from happening inside your microwave. One way to do it is to put a, like a plastic stir stick in the water while you're boiling it. That will, that will prevent uh, the water uh, becoming superheated or put a little bit of sugar or whatever else you're going to put in if you're going to you know, tea bag or put your instant coffee in before you boil it. But the easiest way, obviously, is just to put a plastic stir stick or something non-metallic into the water, have it sticking out of the cup. That'll prevent that from happening. It'll cause convection. It'll cause the water to actually start to move around a bit because the, the steam bubbles will stick to the, uh, to the stir stick and uh, prevent the overpressurization. Uh, that happening. Anyway, now I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the reason why this unit ended up in the recycle bin. I'm sure that it probably uh, I launched a few uh, hot drinks over the inside. Well, it would have to be water. It wouldn't, if there was, if you're reheating coffee, it wouldn't happen. It would have to be pure water, but I'm sure that that's probably what happened and it scared the hell out of the owner and they dumped it and got another one. Uh, anyway, uh, their loss, my gain. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.